Welcome back, Chappelle. All right, so welcome to your first day of virtual school, right? Virtual online school. So we're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to keep making things better and better every single day, right? I can't wait. I'm definitely figuring out some... Um, review game opportunities for y'all to do and I'm gonna try to stop touching my hair but I can't help it um some review game opportunities for y'all uh that'll be like virtual and we'll like all meet up at google meets and we'll like play Kahoot or something like that you know what I mean we could even play minesweeper like you know the game with the grid and stuff y'all know that game and but I can like put eight numbers and letters on it y'all be like uh, b7 and like and I can just like move it like that or something so we'll figure it out, right? It's going to be great, and I'm hoping that y'all learn just as much, if not like a little bit more, during this entire process, right? Now, let's go ahead and get into the first thing of this new quarter, right? The fourth quarter, this new unit and whatnot. We are talking about, so this new unit we're getting into covers the following things, if you want to go ahead and write them down, right? Industrialization or the Industrial Revolution, the effects of Napoleon, all right, i.e., Latin American independence, as well as the concert of Europe, all right? And then nationalism and imperialism, okay? Now, a couple of those things kind of interrelate a little bit, so I'm going to say it again. Um, industrial Revolution, right? The effects of Napoleon, national, excuse me, nationalism and imperialism, right? Those are the big four things in this unit, okay? But let's go ahead and get into the first one, right? The Industrial Revolution. So... Yeah. The Industrial Revolution, something that some of y'all have probably heard about a little bit before up until this point, is like a major movement that occurred from about 1760 to around 1840-ish, right? So we don't really have raw, hard, and fast numbers on when the Industrial Revolution exactly started and ended, but we do know that the main part of it like began in the mid-1700s because goods were going from being produced in a simple, handmade way, which was wildly inefficient by modern standards to a larger factory-based model like the one we use today, right? So instead of making this shirt that I'm wearing right now by hand, we now are going to process it and make it in a factory. Things are going to become mechanized. Things are going to become much more intense. Jobs are going to become more available, and it's going to dramatically change the way everything works, okay? So it's also, it's going to do, like, this whole thing, I don't like teaching it that much sometimes, but it is very interesting to some people, right? And I know a lot about it, and the, but the greatest thing about it is some of y'all might actually find this really solidly interesting. Factories, the conditions in the factories, right? The hazards inside the factories, uh, the coal mines, right? How that affected people, how social classes changed dramatically. But the big thing about it is this thing is a couple of big things. It's like the death toll for feudalism, right? Feudalism officially dies, like, because it's just now non-efficient anymore in the Industrial Revolution. And then also, not to mention the fact that, like, the old social class system dies, but a new one replaces it. That has its own new type of lower class individuals and inadequacies, right? So now, the other big stuff is mechanization and efficiency become major themes, okay? But the major changes occur in textile production, factories, the mining of iron and coal, the refinement of metals, and transportation. Also, there's a population explosion, right? So, but those are the big things, the areas of life that things are changed in, right? Now, before we move any further, let's go ahead and talk about what textiles are, all right? Textiles are goods that had to do with cloth, right? Cloth, well now, ironically enough, this thing is stretchy and it's polyester, but we're not getting into that right now. We're going to pretend it's made out of cotton, right? So, for example, we're going to... Hold on. Mm. Like, this is textile production, right? This is an adorable throw pillow that uh, my wife and I have that it goes on our little like guest bed in here inside of our guest room that's now my flip lab, which will be changing a little bit, and also, don't worry, some of your friends, Tiberius, Gaius, Drew, and Ginsburg will be making their reappearance. They're over in the kitchen. Um, so that is a textile, right? Cloth, the production of cloth and its manufacturing, right? So now the thing about it is it's not like crazy easy to explain the Industrial Revolution, but I'm going to try and show it to you in a couple of pictures, right? So we're going to go from this producing cloth by hand to this, right? C producing cloth in factories. We're going to go from this, which is simple wagons and horse-drawn transportation, to this, steam locomotives and like the use of intense forms of transportation, whether it be steam boats, steam locomotive, 
Um, not cars for a long time. Don't get that twisted. All right. Like, so don't like, yeah. And then we're also going to go from this, the old feudal way to this new type of society, right? So this is a massive change and all these arrows right here signify the industrial revolution, right? This leaving behind of what you would call the old way, the feudal way, the middle ages way, and then adopting a new, more efficient way of life, right? So we got to get started though, back in the middle ages, right? You can't talk about the industrial revolution without talking about where it's coming from. <gasps> oh wait, and also some of y'all, I forgot to say, some of y'all should be very, very excited because we're finally moving in to a period of history where we're moving away from painted pictures and we're coming into photography, right? Photography is going to become a major science during the 1800s. And so we're now moving into a point in history where we can look at photographs together. We can actually analyze photographs together. That's going to definitely be a major assignment. It's just like art interpretation and photo analysis. Um, also map-based analysis and stuff like that. So get ready for that kind of stuff. It's going to be awesome. All right. So anyway, now, if we're going to talk about the Industrial Revolution, we've got to first talk about the old way of farming, the Middle Ages way, the outdated way, right? So this system that they used to use back in the Middle Ages would be considered wildly inefficient now, right? So the old way of farming, the feudal way of farming, was using this thing known as the open field system, right? So you remember the manor system? You remember back when we talked about the feudal era and the manor system and how, by the way, quick side note, don't mute flips at all during this whole process, right? Because the biggest reason why I'm saying that is I'm putting less words on here and I'm explaining things. So you need to be ready to add extra little notes, right? I can already go ahead and shout out a couple of girls that are doing that and doing it well. Addie, Arsno, right? You're killing it. Your whole um, notes on the flight to Varin were amazing. Uh, Jenna Chimino does a great job. Isabella Jones, right? All those girls are from my F period, but you know what? They killed it on this last test as well. So like... That's a really, really important thing. Make sure you're doing that right. Make sure you're getting that covered. Make sure you're actually like writing down things, not without them being prompted to write down, but because you believe that they might be important, right? But anyway, let's get back to uh, the Industrial Revolution. So this is the old system. This is called the open field system. So back in the day during the Middle Ages and the feudal era, all this land would have been owned by a lord. So like if this was owned by a lord, what was it all called? Does uh, anybody remember... The word for a plot of land in the feudal system, it started with an F. Good job, Paige. A thief, right? This would be an old thief, a part of the manor system. And what, like, what would actually occur is the landowner, or the lord, right, would actually rent out or at least these strips of land to a local village, right? And the village was occupied by serfs, and the serfs had a responsibility to farm enough to feed their families, and also to farm a small surplus, very tiny surplus, to feed the lord and some of the other people that worked on this fief, right? So the problem is, is they only used one or two out of every three of these strips of land, right? In the open field system, System, they used to have to leave one of them unplanted so it could fallow or rest, right? So they would have like oats growing in one part of it and then like wheat or like beans growing in the other. And then the third strip would just be nothing. It would just be there and left to what was known as fallow, right? Now, while it's fallowing, they would sometimes let pasture or they, they would pasture it and they would let like a uh, Animals walk over it and eat and fertilize the earth and stuff, but still, you're like only getting 30 or 66 percent out of all of your land, right? 66 percent of what it could possibly produce. So, this is wildly ineffective, right? Extremely ineffective. So, as history progressed, right, a lot of people began to adopt a new idea, right? And that led to this thing known as the agricultural revolution, right? An agricultural revolution actually came before the industrial revolution, right? Because it made headway, okay? It made headway. It made life easier on the farms. Now, remember, if you have easier life on the farms, you need less people to farm it. You need less people to farm it. You now have workers for these new and upcoming factories, right? So the big three developments are the following things, right? One 
is this bad boy right here, okay? You see this invention right here? This agricultural invention was a very, very important one. And it was known as the seed, seed, S-E-E-D, seed, like what you plant, drill, D-R-I-L-L, -L, right? So this thing was amazing, okay? It was invented by a guy named Jethro Tull. For any of y'all's dads that are listening right now, Jethro Tull was also a band from like the 1980s and 70s, which had a couple of good solid songs, not even gonna lie to you, all right? So the big thing about it though, the Jethro Tull's seed drill, okay? This is like the very first tractor. Okay, when you think of a tractor, you think of a large um, mechanized device that can help you like till land, plant seed, do any about anything you need it to do. Well, this one's really, really interesting because it's got three parts to it, right? It's got plows up front, mini plows, small ones that cut into the dirt, right? And make like a little trough for the seeds to go inside of, right? And then it's got these two big hoppers at the back, right? And so inside of those would be plant, would be seeds, right? Just sitting there. And then you've got two other rakes at the back. But as this thing rolled along, the natural vibrations of it rolling on the ground would just sprinkle the seeds into the new little areas, the troughs that it cut open. And then you see these back rakes back here then they would just go like this and then they would just cover the dirt up over top of the seeds right wildly if more efficient way better because the way you used to have to plant rows and 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 rows of fields during the feudal era was the way that they everybody had done it for the longest time by hand which was extremely inefficient. If you're sprinkling seeds in a cut-in trough of dirt on a field, you're gonna lose a lot of them to the wind, to birds, to other things as such, because you're not covering them back up again. The seed drill cut the troughs for you, planted the seeds, and covered it back up. You just took the jobs of 30 people and turned it into one device that only takes a horse, right? So one horse, one guy, now plants an entire field, right? So then you've also got this guy right here, the iron plow. I think it's Rothenberg's iron plow. This was a huge development because before we already know that the plow existed, it came around there in the Middle Ages uh, and it had been used for like quite some time, but the iron plow had not. The iron plow, Rothenberg's iron plow, would be drawn by two horses and could now turn dirt much more efficiently. So turning the dirt is very, very important because you're aerating the soil, you're turning over old crop, turning it into compost, and it's a very, very important device. Yet again, another device that limited the need for tons of workers on farms. Then you got this one, another very important one, the enclosure system. Since you have devices like the seed drill and the iron plow, now what you can do is you can have one or two of those and one family can farm an entire enclosed area. And what you do with that family, you tell that family to farm a certain thing, the lords can now make more money off of it, and they could use less people, right? Because going back to the open field system, look at this big dingy thing, like, look at this thing. That took tons of people, tons of people to help farm that giant area. Now, subdivide all the area, fence it in, make each family take care of one field of pot. They live on your land, that's how they work, that's what they get, and now they're not only producing food for themselves, they're producing it at a large surplus. Now, many people, like, so we got three things that we just recovered, or recovered, right? The seed drill, invented by Jethro Tull, um, Rothenberg's iron plow, and then we also have the enclosure system. Now, this agricultural revolution is very important because these developments required less labor on farms and many people started using their spare time to make money at an hourly, hourly rate on the side or to find work in the cities. The side hustle is very, very important, right? You got to understand that. And then along with the enclosure system, this thing came around. The Dutch, right, invented this thing known as the four field crop rotation system. So now, some of y'all were still like, yeah, Mr. Terry, they enclosed it, they had this plow, they had the seed drill, but they're still only getting 66% of the possible yield out of their dirt because they're letting a third of it just sit there all year long. And you'd be right, Jenna Gomez, but like, let's keep going a little bit. Landowners now decided to adopt this thing that was invented by the Dutch, crop rotation. They picked four big crops, right? Particularly the big four. Barley and wheat are used to make bread, which they're very, very important, right? The other two 
were used to reinvigorate the soul and you and be used as uh, what you call animal feed, right? So turnips and clover or turnips and cloves or turnips and another type of small tuber like vegetable, right? Because what would happen with them, turnips and clover revitalize the soul, right? A lot of them die inside of the dirt and then they actually add nutrients back to it. And what you would do is you would now move field one to field two next year, move field, move field two to field three, field three to field four, field four to field one, right? And you would just rotate your cross. And it kept the dirt better, more plentiful, more oxygenated, better nutrients, and so it would grow more things. And all you had to do was move it from one enclosure to the other. Genius, right? Landowners can now assign each enclosure and family to a specific crop, increasing their yields, right? Again, less people, more efficient, more time to work on the side. So then what ended up happening is this thing known as the Industrious Revolution. Do not get this confused with the Industrial Revolution, right? The Industrial Revolution is how processes like the ones that the people in this picture are doing become mechanized and automated and they have big factories with steam power, right? That's the Industrial Revolution. The industrious revolution is the side hustle revolution, right? So to give you a good example, I have, well, I did before all this stuff broke out. I had some side hustles, right? Because, like, you know, I'm Mr. Terry, and I'm very, very cheap, and I like to have, like, money to spend on stupid little goofy stuff, right? So now the side hustle for me was refing lacrosse and uh, tutoring on the side, right? Tutoring math mostly. So the greatest thing about the industrious revolution was the fact that now there needed to be less labor on farms, that the people that still worked on some of these farms now had their entire afternoon and evenings open to do more work to make money at an hourly rate. So it provided time for people to work, right? And it was adopted this thing called the Industrious Revolution where people began to work for a wage, right? They began to work for like a little side hustle job, right? So instead of their main job, which was farming. So now people had time to work outside of farming. They began to work at an hourly rate in their homes. It was known as the cottage industry, right? Because they're doing all their work inside of a cottage, right? Now we could go much further with this and we could talk about the putting out system and we could talk about how all this stuff was made in different steps. We're not going to get into all that right now. You know, it's just, it's a survey course, so we don't really need to do all that. But look, these right here is a group of spinners, right? Those are women spinning thread. Now, some of your moms and dads might have ever might have heard the old uh, the old adage, all those old spinsters or they're all, all those they're, those women are there spinning a the yarn, right? Talking about them gossiping. That's an old thing that comes from this thing called the Industrial Revolution because a lot of widows or older women could spin thread for an hourly rate during following the agricultural revolution, right? Then you've got this whole idea as well. The cottage industry also affected entire families. This is a father right here on a loom, right? Looms are these giant contraptions that would be used to weave cloth, right? I'm going to go ahead and show you one real, real quick because they're extremely important. Um, we're going to go ahead and, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, loom in action. Where's a big one? I want the big old one. Yeah, here we go. So this gigantor of a thing, right, is ignore the flying shuttle. That comes later. So this big, big, big giant thing is known as a loom, right? So some houses would have these big, huge things, right? These looms would be used to create cloth itself. So there were these large contraptions that had all these threads that came down. And then you would take one thread at a time and weave that thread by hand all the way through and then quack, quack, and like pull on this big, like this big, what's it called? It had a name. We're gonna call it like a, a railing for now. And you would pull on it like that and it would take all the threads and it'd tighten them all up, right? But the loom was extremely important because people now had a large one in their house, right? And they could now easily weave thread. And a lot of times the father was the one who operated the loom. Here's another big picture of a loom right here, right? So look how happy this lady is. Some people actually still use these things. Um, so this is a loom and it was for made for making cloth. Think about your shirt, think about the stuff you're wearing right now. That's originally how these things were made were on these giant devices called looms. But now because the an agricultural revolution, people could actually work on a loom in their house and produce things at an hourly rate, right? They could make money on the side, which is huge. Yeah, now? All right, I love you.
Yeah. They're just hanging out. Hello. How's it going? I'm talking about the industrious revolution and working at an hourly rate. Why don't you rate. call it the industrial revolution? Because the industrial revolution is about mechanization and that has to do with steam power and other major I inventions. You didn't pay me to ask this. I really didn't know. Have you already explained that? I have already explained that. Sorry, if only she had been paying attention. <laughs> See, she's just as bad as y'all are. No, but I can pause the video and rewind. <laughs> and let's do it again. Love you. Love you too. Stick to That's fun. Um, maybe. Can we give them bonus points or something? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay. Right. Um, if you can name all essential amino acids, you get what? Where are they going to put this answer? I don't know. In an email? Okay, fine. If you... No. That's not good? Because I'm going to get bombarded with like 90 emails. About, okay, so maybe... Um, can we do dietary about the industrious revolution? Sure. Okay. Um, culturally appropriate meal for industrious revolution in England? Yeah, there you go. Okay. What was well, a culturally appropriate it has meal? It full course. It's not like just bangers and mash. Like I need the whole... I need the side. This one doesn't even understand how the, poor these people were. I, I, I don't care. <laughs> I need the drinks. All right, anyway... All a, okay, culturally so appropriate meal. <laughs> a culturally Bye. appropriate meal for the Industrial Revolution. Whoever emails me first gets extra credit, okay? So now, going into it, though, why textiles, right? So all of that, like, cottage industry stuff was focused around the production of textiles, right? Some of you probably are asking yourself, why textiles? Why was that the first place to pick up side work? I'll tell you why, right? It's because of these guys, right? Look at them sheep, all right? So them sheep are very, very important. So you have to understand, Great Britain and the UK was an ideal place for farming, herding, and producing large numbers of sheep, right? The climate is perfect for them. It's naturally, evolutionarily speaking, where they come from. And then also, not to mention the fact that the enclosure system that had just recently been adopted in the agricultural revolution was going to give possibility, effectiveness, and better scenarios to actually produce more sheep. So you had more wool lying around, right? Wool makes cloth, okay? Wool makes itchy cloth, but still, it's the big one. Also, wool came first, then came your other one, cotton, right? Cotton comes later. Cotton comes later when the British start growing it in their colonies, particularly where... No, not in America, all right? Stop being selfish. No, it's when in India, right? They grew a lot of it in India, and then they would ship the Indian cotton into their factories or their cottage industry, have that made into textiles, and then they would sell it back to the Indians and or uh, to colonial Americans and things like that, right? So, well, not colonial Americans. We had already revolutionized. Now, anyway, so why? It's because they had a lot of access to those textile goods, right? Now, production in the 1700s is then going to begin to ramp up, and so now we're seeing the earliest phases of the industrial revolution, right? All centered around the textile industry. So that's the big industry that was affected by the industrial revolution going forward, the textile industry, right? So production is going to ramp up and this right here is the beginning of the industrial revolution, right? The industrial revolution had its beginnings in three big particular inventions, which I need you to write down really, really quick. And they're very, very important all centered around the textile industry, right? Now your next assignment, your extension assignment has to do with these three inventions, so make sure you jot these things down, right? You got one right here, okay? One right here, this one came first. It's called the flying shuttle, all right? The flying shuttle. Flying, right? Flying shuttle, all right? So you need to know that one. And then you need to know this guy down here, the spinning, Jenny, all right, spinning Jenny, as in spinning and Jenny, like spinning cloth, spinning thread, right? Like I showed you with the other woman out there. A spinning wheel is what was used to make one thread back in the day. The spinning Jenny changed all that, right? And so then you've got this device right here. It's called the water frame. Water as in glug, 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 and then frame like picture frame, right? So you got the flying shuttle, you got the spinning jenny, you got the water frame, right? So those things are in order. Your next assignment has to do with all these things where you're going to talk about who invented it, what did it do, how did that change everything, right? So going into it though, I'm going to keep moving on then, right? Because I don't want to waste all your time in the first flip. And then you had this major invention, wolf. This bad boy came after all those leave space for those other inventions right you should go like flying shuttle one two three four lines of space spinning jenny one two three four lines of space uh water frame one two three four lines of space and then this invention right and this invention 
was known as the steam engine, right? So this thing is phenomenally important. Its original use was to pull water out of factories, or not out of factories, pull water out of coal mines, right? Coal, aluminum, and other like precious metal mines, right? So during the Industrial Revolution, going into it anyway, this created a higher dependency for coal, right? A lot of people needed a lot more coal so you could smelt iron, make metals, do other different types of things that you needed that were necessary for the Industrial Revolution, right? So they needed a way to get water out of these mines, right? Any of y'all ever been to the beach before and like you keep, you dig into the sand and eventually you're gonna hit a spot where water is gonna fill your hole, right? So some of you are like, I made sand castles. Well, look, Savannah, we don't care about what you made, all right? So I was a hole guy. I was just like, mm, like, see how far I can get, right? So the, like, the lower and lower you dig, it's gonna begin to fill with water, all right? The steam engine was invented originally by two guys named Tom or Newcomen and Savory, right? Newcomen and Savory's invention of the steam engine, though, they broke really often, and the only thing they would do is just go, gong, 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 gong. and use steam power to drive a piston, and that piston would then go like, -na 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 -na, and it would pull water on a big rope and a device out of these mines, right? It would just be like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. like, so it was very simple, very, very simple. The rope was attached to this bad boy right here, and it would just pull water in buckets out of the mines, right? but they broke really often, right? They broke all the time because they didn't conserve any of the water that powered the steam engine itself, right? So, and in a later flip, right, tomorrow's flip, we'll talk about the steam engine, how it works and stuff like that. But its original use was to pull water out of mines. But then along comes this guy, James Watt. Watt, W-A-T-T. -T. James Watt, so influential, so important that we have named electrical current after the guy, right? So James Watt added this key component on to the steam engine. It's called a condenser, right? He took, he was originally just a guy that came in to repair them because they broke constantly, right? And he came in and he was like, oh, we could revolutionize the design of these things and add a condenser onto it. It'll catch a bunch of that water and keep it all from escaping and it'll be much more efficient, right? So he then took this new idea, the steam engine, and then it was added to everything. It could be used on factory machines, right? The power looms were the big ones, right? The factory machines, the locomotives, right? Steam engine trains, steam boats, steam powered everything now, right? That device right there is the epitome of the Industrial Revolution inventions, right? So we just talked about four large inventions, the flying shuttle, the spinning jenny, the water frame, and the steam engine, right? Those four are very, very important, but that's it. That's your first flip for online school. I'll talk to you guys later on. Remember, you've got the warm-up that you had to do and submit. You got this flip, and then you had your extension assignment that's coming right up underneath it. Let's have a good first day. Uh, email me if you have any questions or if you need any help. I'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good one.